Hello, my soccer universe. Yes, it is very late in the tournament, but I decided now that the quarterfinals start and this never ending group phase is behind us, it might be a good time to also check on the Copa America, where, to be honest, I have barely seen a thing. I have seen a great free kick by Messi, I saw a goal by um, Papo Gomez, I saw a few nice goals by Argentina against Bolivia. So those were the highlights and a little bit of Brazil also, I think, against Venezuela. I also saw some highlights there as well. Um, there are actually two reasons why, three, two and a half, uh, re reasons why I gave the Copa America this time around short shrift. First of all, the way that it was kind of plowed, you know, crowbarred into the calendar, uh, or, you know, made to work with first it should have been in Colombia and Argentina, then should have all been in Argentina, then because of COVID we move it to Brazil where the situation is not better than in Argentina. We make it in a bubble. Uh, the Brazilian national team even doesn't really want to play it. And, you know, all these kinds of things made me actually feel it's not the right time to play this tournament. Um, that's number one. Number number two, putting it on the same spot as the Euros. And this was already planned. It, I mean, it should have been in 2020, this tour tournament. I really like my Copa to be in an odd year, like the last one it was in 2019, even played every two years or whatever. Uh, I don't mind that. I think this is a perfect spot where I... Uh, this is not very purpose, but I think it goes for a lot of European fans, you know, outside of South America. Yes, it's a South American championship and this championship is most of all for them. Totally get that. Yeah, so whatever I'm saying as a Euro European doesn't probably really apply. However, I still think that given the global attention that is on the Euros, the Copa America, you know, it's always an afterthought in a way. When it actually should uh, uh, be kind of very much in the center because you have two of the biggest stars not only playing, but playing really, really well. And, that, and this is something that the Copa America has that the Euros this time around really do not have that much. You have this star power that makes it kind of interesting. So that's the second one. I mean, uh, it crashing with the Euros diverts my attention away from it instead of me. And I am I really like the Copa America. Uh, it's just, you know, the time zone is already bad. And then if I have been watching all the Euro games, the Copa America is just a tad too much for me. Uh, takes them too much time. And then the last reason you see it on the back there. I don't have enough South American jerseys. I mean, I can make eight here. I have a ninth here. Uh, then I have a tenth up there. And then I already need some uh, teams that have been taking part in the Copa America with Australia and the US, but they are not playing this time around. So, yeah. Uh, I clearly also have not been prioritizing South American teams. Yep, this is a fake. Unfortunately, I still have it. And I thought, yeah, for the Copa America, I'll keep it. And then let's see how I will um, get rid of it uh, in, in a way. But yeah, um, not enough jerseys. But I am working currently on a few. However, I thought it might be a good time now to take stock in what has happened so far in the tournament how the quarterfinals stand, who are the favorites going forward. Um, and yeah, I'm even planning maybe to, um, after the quarterfinals of the Euros are done, to maybe even do um, a jersey review for the Copa America because there are some really interesting and some really super nice, probably the best jersey at any international tournament is in the Copa America, in my opinion. So uh, there's some good stuff in there too. So yeah, I would say let's uh, dive in and I'll give you a little bit. I mean, uh, before I go into the results, I also say the format, I understand. I mean, 10 teams, it's not perfect. Uh, and I, what, what I never like about the Coco Comera is the guest teams. I think with 10 teams, probably the format that you have right, right now is almost the best. With these two groups of five, and then you have few moving on to a quarterfinal. I personally think the quarterfinal is what makes this format so ridiculous. Make it just a semifinals. Two groups of five, make a semifinal and a final. You can even make it a two-legged semifinal. 
I think that would work. I know there are only 10 teams. I do not like guest teams, but I do not like that we spend like two weeks to eliminate two teams. Two teams that where one has been uh, severely ravaged by COVID and the other one was anyway almost a foregone conclusion. So with all that, let's move in. We have here the results for Group A. It started with a little bit of a um, downer for our Argentina, where I think a great Messi free kick, then a 1-1 one -one against Chile. But other than that, Argentina has been beating Uruguay, they have been beating Paraguay, um, and then uh, against Bolivia, who have lost all, all, all the games. They actually had some fun and really showed entertaining stuff. And it seems like that Messi looks really good. This Argentina team looks defensively solid. And that might lead us forward that there might be something happening with uh, maybe Messi can finally get a national team title outside of the Olympics. Um, as you well know, Argentina is my favorite team in South America, eight bar one, and I will uh, reveal that in the that that's place in the other group. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that Chile is not doing the bad, but you know, that's an old gang and actually I cannot wait for Chile to be eliminated very, 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 very soon because I honestly, uh, that's a bunch that never really, I, I, you know, how to say, they annoyed me a whole lot uh, since 2016, especially uh, by beating Argentina twice in the final. In Group B, Neymar is brilliant and Neymar is scoring goals, he is showboating, he does everything. But he is really, really well for Brazil and Brazil uh, is going from strength to strength. I mean, the 3 0 over Venezuela in the opener was probably not nothing to come about because Venezuela was playing with the C team. However, the 4 0 against Peru, which is the favorite team in South America for a simple reason, I have family relations there. Peru in South America is to me what Austria and Bulgaria are in Europe. The teams that where I have family relations to that are beyond doubt that I'm gonna support this. Although with Austria I'm doing having a hard time. But Peru actually uh, steadied themselves and maybe it was not the best thing to have the first game against uh, Brazil who had already played a game prior was already kind of rolling. Uh, they got a win over Colombia. 2-1, uh, a 2-2 against uh, neighbors Ecuador and then a 1-0 over Venezuela actually saw Peru finishing in second uh, place and this is how the groups ended. We have Argentina ahead of Uruguay, Paraguay and Chile. So the old gang barely hanging in there. And then Brazil, Peru, Colombia, Ecuador, which sets up the following bracket. Uh, we have Argentina, Ecuador and Uruguay, Colombia and then Brazil, Chile, Peru, Paraguay. Uh, so these are the games going forward. I do not quite understand why the first and the second place team of each group, if you know the seeding holds, would then play in the semifinal. Would it make more sense if Argentina and Ecuador play against the win of Peru and Paraguay, then Brazil and Chile play against the win of Uruguay and Colombia? I think this would make a whole lot more sense to me. Go figure. Maybe you want to make it easier for Brazil to win it. Uh, we, we know the common ball is... No, I don't want to make no, any uh, theories there. The bracket, if we project forward, we would get a pretty good uh, semifinal between Argentina and Uruguay. Um, and I was actually surprised, despite being second, Paraguay has a slightly higher rating uh, in FIFA, ELO and the bookies, especially uh, that actually will see them over Peru and face Brazil in another semifinal. So we have three teams from Group A and only Brazil from Group B moving forward. However, Brazil is the overwhelming fav favorite. You see, even in a final against our Argentina, they would be an almost 60% favorite there, where Uruguay would probably go for a third place, which kind of would settle the how the standings are in uh, South America. You would say Brazil, Argentina, U Uruguay are the three best teams. Colombia, a little bit surprising that they're not that well, uh, to be honest, but you know, uh, maybe they can spring a surprise against Uruguay, which definitely is the best um, of the four quarterfinals, I would say. As for winning it all, uh, Brazil with 39% you have it in the table here, um, overwhelming favorite to win it, Argentina 20, 24%, and then Uruguay just 11%. Everyone else is also ran. We see Paraguay and Peru who play each other uh, just behind Colombia, Ecuador, and Chile with only outside chances to win it. So when will those quarterfinals be played? So this is now Euro European times. The first one will actually be played tonight between Peru and Paraguay, but it's 11. And you see already, that's kind of the time that I don't like. And then Brazil against Chile. So you, we get the first semifinal setup um, 
tonight. And then Uruguay, Colombia and Argentina against Ecuador um, the other night uh, in Brazil. They of course played on the 2nd and 3rd, 3rd July. Having all the time difference and I tried to work it out goes this way. The final is actually played the night before the Euro final, so I think this is interesting. As I said, I am actually planning uh, to do after I talk about the um, quarterfinals of, of the Euros, maybe a day later I will do so also for the Copa America and then yeah, we'll see uh, how I will squeeze in the jersey reviews. I might well do one before the semifinals and one uh, before the final to get it over with. And yeah, so the Copa America I probably can do within um, this video, quarterfinal video, semifinal video, final video, plus you know, six videos for the Copa America. And I think I'm quite happy doing so. As I said, the group stage was a little bit tedious, so that's why I left it out. Anyway, let me know uh, if you follow the Cop 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 America, if you can add anything to what I said uh, in here. Um, also, which teams do you support in there? I heard already a few people, Brazil, Uruguay. I know some of my subscribers as well. And yeah, let me know your thoughts on the Copa America in general. I personally hope that they go back to the old cycle. Let's see. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel, see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so that you're updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!